Rub up your engines! CP Ham KMK says, do front wheel drive Honda Ridgelines V6 require valve adjustments? Yes, they do. Honda is a company that's still old school. Their valves have rocker arms that have threaded rods and two nuts on them. And you have to loosen the nuts and then adjust the valves. And the V6, that means you got 24 valve adjustments you have to do. It is a pain in the butt, but you do need to do it every so often. Because if you don't, they can run bad, especially if you find that it's running. But then when you shut it off, eat lunch, you come and they're hard to start that's because they're all jammed up because they need to be adjusted so it is something you do have to do the plug says opinions an 06 volvo xc90 they're actually pretty solid built vehicles but you're talking about what, a 16 year old volvo you want to make sure it's been maintained let's say it's an older couple or something and it's only got 50,000 miles hey they buy it up if you can get a good price it'd be a great vehicle but don't overpay and don't buy one that has like 180 200,000 miles unless you're getting it for 500 bucks because when the transmissions or engines goes they cost an absolute fortune but i got customers driving those things around they have 160 170 they bought them used for a couple of grand and they, they're happy with them you know they're, they're decent vehicles Raphael silva says scotty i don't like common cars I mostly like BMWs and Alphas, even though they're built poorly. If I baby them, they can last a long time with proper maintenance. Yeah, if you don't put too many miles on them and you baby them, okay. But people don't buy BMWs and Alphas most of the time to baby them. They buy them to throttle the heck out of them and then they fall apart. So, yes, if you do baby it and you buy one, it could last quite some time, especially if you're talking about buying them new in Europe where they get generally better made ones in Europe. They're usually ones that are made in Germany and in Italy and not made in Mexico or South America or something. So they are a higher quality than the stuff they sell in the United States. Pierce says, is a Toyota Sequoia second generation good or bad? No, they're excellent vehicles as long as you don't care about gas mileage. They're absolute gas hogs. They got a big old V8 engine in them, you know, but they can run and run and run and run. They're excellent vehicles. I got to bring me one over here the other day at 450,000 miles on the thing. So they can last a really long time, but they're tremendous gas most of my customers, when I ask them, what kind of gas mods you get in your Sequoia? They said, I don't want to know. I know it's bad. I just fill it up when I need to. <laughs> and I don't even chance it. I don't want to get depressed. <laughs> Jay Summers says, Scotty, I got no 04 Ford Mustang base model auto. 230,000 miles to tranny feels like it's slipping. Okay, well, you got 230,000 miles to Mustang. It's probably had a hard life. It's probably going to need to be rebuilt. But what the heck? Try this. Drain out just one quart of the automatic transmission fluid. One quart. Then put in one quart of Lucas automatic transmission anti-slip. Sometimes I've seen it do miracles on those. If it doesn't help, just keep driving it until it does go out and then decide you want to spend a bunch of money on a new transmission or do you want to give up and get another vehicle? Because with 230,000 miles on, I would not advise rebuilding yours. There's probably so many worn out parts and when guys rebuild them, they get a kit that has a few parts in it. They don't rebuild everything and they'd use a bunch of the old parts over. So I wouldn't rebuild that one. I would get a remanufacturer one myself. I would not try to fix that one. Why it hand you say? Scotty, what are some of the best jobs to start working with cars? All right, if you want a future, do electronics. Learn electronics. Electronics and cars are going to be the future. Now, I still say it's going to be a long time before the majority of people are driving electric cars, but the electrification of normal cars is done really high. And if eventually a lot of people do drive electric cars, you'll know the technology, you'll be able to fit right in and fix the stupid things. So, you know, get into the electronics. If you don't like electronics, don't get into fixing cars these days because everything on them is electronic one way or the other. Or even the braking systems. David Kevin 03 says, Scotty, how often should I sing the transmission fluid on a 2017 Honda Civic 2 liter manual? Okay, it's a manual transmission. I'd say, hey, go ahead and change maybe every 60,000 miles or something. It's just splash lubrication. It just splashes. Go to the Honda dealer, buy the fluid. It doesn't cost that much. And you just open the drain, it drains out, and then you put that back in. Then you open the ad and you pump it in until it comes out of the ad hole, and that's it. It's a very easy job, but you don't want it to get dirty and wear the gears and eat up the seals when it gets dirt and gritty then the dirty fluid will eat up the seals. Dinner meal says Scotty how do I get my wife to love me again? Well you got to figure out why she stopped loving you <laughs> unless she never loved you in the first place in which you are SOL on that one. Be nice. Give her compliments but not fake compliments. Real compliments. Take her out to dinner. <laughs> do things she likes to do and not stuff you just like to do yourself. <laughs>
<laughs> and make sure a car is clean and shiny and you take care of it. Johnny McCocker says, is it good to shift to neutral after you stopped at a stoplight and automatic transmission? You know, people say one thing or the other. Modern cars are generally doesn't bother them all that much one way or the other, but if you're going to sit for a long period of time, my advice is to shift it into park and shut the car off and just wait. But if you're going to be sitting there waiting for a train for five, ten minutes, it's a good idea to put it in park or neutral. Because if you have an automatic transmission, when you're in drive, the torque converter is spinning and it can overheat just sitting there. Where if you have it in park or neutral, then it's not spinning with the fluid pressure being stressed by the transmission. It's in neutral, so it's not spinning against the transmission that's sitting there with the wheels not moving. So it's a good idea if you're going to be there for five minutes, put it in. And if you got a junker that say idles like crap, what the heck, when you come to a stop, put it in neutral so it doesn't shake as much. A lot of people do that. 98 Crazy X says, Scotty, have you ever worked on old Russian cars like Lada or Moscovitz? What do you think of them? Well, I worked on a lot of ones in Canada because they imported them to Canada. The engine in a lot of that drove the car was the engine that we use as the starter motor for the Russian tank. So, you know, we're talking about pretty low technology there. But since that's the only thing the Russians could get, hey, you'd like what you have, and that's the only thing you can get. But I had friends in Canada that had the things and they drove around and liked them. So they're little bitty puddle jumpers, nothing compared to modern cars. But I mean, if that's all the Russians can get, hey, it beats walking, right? Gregory Bowman says, Scotty, what will be your next car? Well, I guess it'll be a coffin on wheels. I don't plan on getting rid of any of mine. 94 Celica's still working. 07 Matrix working. The 2002 Lexus is working. Do not waste money if you've got nice looking cars that still run like clocks. I would not waste money. It's stupid. They're transportation devices, right? And even with motorcycles. I got two motorcycles in there. A Triumph Thruxton and a Suzuki Gixxer. And they both run like scalded apes. So why would I want another one? You know, I got too many of them it is. <laughs> so I won't be buying and something weird happens, like somebody runs into one of my other ones. Andrew Carrillo says, Scotty, I need help with my 03 Nissan Murano. You know everybody else who bought a Nissan Murano. They're horrible cars. They fall apart. One day I was sitting in a Vietnamese restaurant eating some pho, and I'm looking out the window, and there's a Murano, and they're pulling out of the parking lot, and the front hub just fell off, and the wheel broke off, and then all the fluid came out of the transmission. <laughs> They are very well made. Now, you know, you didn't ask what your exact question was, but, you know, you go to my website, scottykilmer.com, ask a question, I'll answer it there. Give me specifics of if you have any codes and what's wrong with it. John Zancarado says, I got a 2014 Nissan Sentra, broken transmission, I still owe, what do I do? Well, you owe eight grand that thing. Man, somebody saw you coming. That thing isn't worth that much money. You got a broken transmission. Hey, your best bet would be potluck with a used one. Those things get wrecked all the time, and hey, probably going fast when it was wrecked, man, transmission was still working. I would say gamble with a junkyard transmission. I had a customer do that once. He got one for 400 bucks, got charged him 400 bucks to put it in, he drove away and away he went. So that's about the only logical thing you could do. But somehow you got way upside down in that car, you know, a 2014 Nissan Sentra. I could pick them up all day here in Tennessee for like thousand fifteen hundred dollars. They're not worth much. Joel Concesio says, Scotty, big fan from India. Can you suggest an injector cleaner for my VW Polo 1.5 TDI diesel? All right. Use Redline. R-E-D-L-I-N-E. -E. Redline is a very good diesel fuel injector cleaner. I'm sure they sell it in India. It's a big multinational corporation, Redline. They sell diesel stuff all over. And if they don't, go to Amazon, buy from Amazon, have it shipped to India. <laughs> the Redline has service stuff for diesels. All my diesel cars customers swear by them. Chocolate says, how to tell if my catalytic converter is clogged. Well, sometimes I'll trip a code for bad catalytic converter, but it's relatively easy for us mechanics to figure out because when they clog up, they build up back pressure before the cat. And what we do is we take out the oxygen sensor before the cat and we screw in a gauge. We have gauges to measure that stuff. And then if the pressure is like two, three, four, five, six PSI or more, it's clogged. It should be almost nothing, maybe a pound and a half max, but generally it's almost nothing. Another way of just doing it yourself if you don't want to go through all that hassle is if you find you're losing acceleration in a vehicle and only go 30, 40, 45 miles an hour and your temperature gauge that's normally in the middle is now going further to three quarters, that means it's clogged because as your catalytic converter gets clogged, the exhaust gases can't vent out the back of the car. So it builds hot gas in the exhaust system and that makes the engine back up, not be able to go very fast and start to overheat. 
That's a good way of checking it. And like you stick your hand at the end of a normal car on the tailpipe, you'll feel it blowing out. If you put your hand and hardly anything comes out when it's running, you'll know it's clogged up. Sid and Lisa, have you ever seen rear main seal leaks coming on Miata? Yeah, I've seen it when it had an awful lot of miles on it. Now, a lot of times that AT205 reseal, you pour it in the oil, wait a couple hundred miles, 250, a lot of times it'll stop leaking entirely. Now, you know, the only way to fix it is you'd have to pull the transmission off, take the flywheel off, replace the rear main seal, put it back together again. The part's going to cost you 30 bucks, but you're going to have to spend a lot of money pulling that transmission off. So, trying AT205 resale will often fix it. Now, all you got to do is put another bottle in every time you change the oil and filter. So, if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.